Armada, welcome to another episode of the Mordecai Margaret CJ arc series where I go over this entire series long arc and analyze it episode by episode. Currently we're on Dumia Solid, the last season 2 Margaret centric episode and if you haven't seen any of the others leading up to this, it's all nicely organized in bingeable form within the playlist either in the description or pinned comment. Also plug in my reddit. <laughs> So do me a solid and catch up to speed so you can understand everything going on here. The last episode had Mordecai and Rigby fake being in a band for two different reasons. For Rigby, he wanted to do it because it sounded cool, but for Mordecai, he did it because Margaret wanted to see them perform and somehow they almost managed to get away with it. With Mordecai coming clean at the last minute, leading to another participant in the open mic event to go on a dinner date with Margaret. It should be noted that before I started this arc, I already talked about its time, which would have been in the middle of the last episode that I covered and this one and that one had Rigby going out of his way to mess with Mordecai and lighten the mood between Mordecai and Margaret by taking the leap to ask Margaret out to prove that it isn't such a hard thing to do. It didn't end well for him. I'll kill you! Oh, yeah! So going off of that, we're now at Dumia Solid, a well-known episode for introducing the solid aspect in the show, and possibly to some of you watching. They don't spend a lot of time explaining it. Hey Mordecai, do me a solid and get me a lemonade from the kitchen. Okay. But you owe me a solid. Of course, that's how solids work. Getting into it quickly, you see how both a solid works, but more importantly, how they're so casual with it. They use it to accentuate the rather trademark tendency to take the path of least resistance. And you know what? As a panda who has spent the foundational time of his life falling off of a tree branch, that's not too bad of a life, honestly. Apparently, Mordecai and Rigby were watching some of the other regular show reviews out on YouTube that they couldn't show on Cartoon Network for legal purposes, plus it would ruin the space-time continuum. And Mordecai and Rigby changed the channel because only one channel knows how to do it and do it right. You'll go on to see that they use it for frivolous uses, turning a comic page, drying hands, cheesing nachos, creating a demon hell spawn. Oh my god. Mordecai, Rigby! Hey Pops, hey Skips. Hey, Skips. You think you want some chips with that cheese? Oh yeah, I guess we overdid it with the cheese, huh? <laughs> <laughs> As we round out season 2, you'll notice that the chemistry between the guys are getting there. Within the season 1 episodes that I talked about, they behave the way that my sims behave when they're at acquaintanceship level, and that makes sense because we get to know them over time. Skips, Pops, Muscle Man, they all get to know these two as well. It's also just nice to see them vibe together given that in Mordecai and Margaret based episodes, they're usually not around to witness the sheer simpage that this man would do. You shouldn't abuse the power of the solid, bad things will happen. Can you at least pretend you didn't see us? Okay, but you owe me a solid. The wise, stern, deadpan, and funny skips makes this moment, as with that warning, you would notice that they don't listen to that warning. It's similar to Hooky from Spongebob, where because nothing bad has happened yet, why stop? Clearly that is skips just being way too cautious and that they know what they're doing. They never know what they're doing. However, now we get to a crucial scene. I'm about to test your regular show knowledge. There's going to be a few things said here that if you are a fan of the show and you've watched the show and you remember the show, some of the reactions should seem rather ironic in hindsight. As they head to the coffee shop, Eileen is seen checking out Rigby. Of course, Rigby, razzed a bit by Mordecai, goes out of his way to say that he's not interested, but not in a way that is outwardly rude to Eileen. In fact, he's actually very polite in comparison to what he could have have done and would have done if he was pushed over the edge. So, um, Rigby, I was wondering, do you like miniature golf? My shift ends early tonight. Wanna go? Yeah, I'm waxing my car tonight, so... Oh, that's cool. I didn't mean it like a date or anything. It would be a group thing. You, me, Mordecai, and Margaret. Now, my theory is that the double date was not planned because if that were the case, as a shy panda myself, you would ask it in a way to create the least amount of friction and you would have phrased it as a group thing to begin with. However, this had to be her plan B because we had later learned that Margaret had prior plans. I would have loved to see that scene and see how Margaret spoke about Mordecai when Mordecai wasn't around. Now let's play a game of Mordecai. It's a game I just made up. Four choices. So with this information that Margaret is going to be there, does Mordecai A, respect his friend's boundaries and double down on not going, B, respect his friend's boundaries and decide to go without him, C, respect his friend's boundaries and see if they can make it a bigger group thing, or D, respect his friend's boundaries and try to make it less awkward for Eileen and Rigby, causing them to respect her more. Do me a solid and go out with Eileen so I can go on a date with Margaret. 
What? Why? Dude, come on. This is my chance to finally get with Margaret. Of course it was E. Simp. Now let's step aside here and make sure that we all have the same definition of simp. I looked the word up on Urban Dictionary and I didn't like a lot of those definitions there, so put that aside. A simp is a person, can be any gender or identity, where you put someone else on a pedestal, meaning that their opinions, thoughts, behaviors, and actions instantaneously align with yours, even if contradictory, in an attempt to develop a more fruitful relationship later via doing things that you would not normally do for anyone else. This can include always defending a person even when it makes you look like a hypocrite, adjusting your day or your finances to accompany someone else, even when it don't need it or don't ask for it, or even worshipping them, everything that they say, even when they don't view themselves that way, or even if they do. This online discourse about Mordecai being a simp or not is so weird because if Mordecai isn't a simp, then who would be? He literally blocked out his entire day to train to become a musician. He blocked out his own time to help Margaret move, not to help her out of the kindness of his heart by the way, but to ask her out on a date afterwards and even went as far as the microwave clocks just to ruin Rigby's date because he feels so entitled to Margaret. Rigby, please, you have to do me this solid. All right, I'll do it for 10 solids. What? Oh, and he literally gave Rigby 10 reasons, 10 times in life, 10 solids to make his life worse just for this date. Well, let's talk about what a simp is not. A simp is not someone who was interested in the girl. If Mordecai was interested, but didn't make it seem like a no was like the end of the world or wasn't so desperate about it, you know, that that's fine. That's, that's one thing. A simp is not someone who pays for a date, wants to arrange a date, or even defend someone online if they genuinely believe in the argument, you know? It's like a simp isn't someone who casually donates to a stream because they want to support the streamer with no strings attached. A simp also isn't someone who enjoys playing with someone of the opposite gender. All of these things are casual. You can do these things without sacrificing your own self-worth and self-respect because you're desperate for something or that you feel like you need to have that thing to make your life feel full. Here, this man is fighting for the date. Mind you, for a coffee girl that is still bland. She is so bland and so basic. Up to this point, we still know very little about Margaret, except that she's had a few dates and she likes basic things. Oh, movies, music, coffee. Wow, much depth. And that's not a knock to her because later on we'd learn that she'd actually have a great personality, but just to view this situation the right way, we're not talking about two people who know each other well. Mordecai is just a repeat customer that's the same age as her. This is a lot of determination, at least according to the audience perspective, for a freaking stranger. Uh, hey, Mordecai, can you do me a solid and hang back with Eileen? Uh... Fine. And the crazy thing is, they do Eileen dirty in this episode, which would just show you how amazing Eileen and Rigby would go on to be. Like both of them have acknowledged that Margaret is hot, but it seems like Eileen is the biggest Chad here, given that she wrangled everyone together for the date. However, just for historical purposes, I should say, Rigby's first solid was getting Mordecai to sit in the back. And I mean, I get it. You wanna sit up front with who you think would be your future girl, but let's be honest. What are you gonna do up there that you couldn't do in the back seat? That's right, nothing. G get your bird butt in the back. Hey Margaret, check it out. I want to suck your blood. So red and juicy. Hey Rigby, look at me. I just laid sea turtle eggs and now I'm gonna swim out to sea. Although many of my hatchlings won't live to adulthood. Okay, so we're not gonna talk about how Eileen literally teleported within the scene and no one noticed. Anywho, I know I harp a lot on Mordecai and I should say this little disclaimer, it might be a little bit annoying because I'm gonna be saying it in every single episode involving an arc, but just bear with me. I love the show, I love the characters, this is a really good episode, but just because this is a good episode doesn't mean that I'm gonna look away from the simp behavior that goes on here. I'm not gonna look away from his behavior just because I like the episode, I like the show, I like the characters, okay? Cool. You can be a simp and entertaining. In fact, if you were to say that Mordecai was just normal and none of this stuff happened, that he would be boring, I'd agree with you. He actually wouldn't be Mordecai if he didn't do these desperate things and if he was just like a regular guy or bird. But again, you can be a simp and entertaining. Those two words are not against each other. So just earlier what I said about not looking away from Mordecai's behavior, yeah, that goes for Rigby as well. He ends up using his solids progressively throughout the date to embarrass Mordecai, in a sense, getting back at him for using a solid to basically force him on a date with a very interested Eileen. Do me a solid and yell as loud as you can. What? Why? You don't even get anything out of that. Cool, then we can call off this stupid date and go home. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, if we're counting that second solid, you can clearly see what Rigby's angle is. He'd even use his third solid to trick Mordecai into eating a burrito doused in hot sauce. To which I would probably ask what kind of mini golf course would have such a hot hot sauce just on deck. But you know, I'm probably assuming maybe Rigby bought it himself. I don't even know. I should say gradually over the course of this episode, we'd see that Margaret takes a lot of these awkward moments and she wears them. She doesn't make a fuss and is actually quite mature about all of this oddly. Can you do me a solid and get some popcorn? I'm all out of money. Uh, hey, Margaret, can I borrow five bucks? Sure, Mordecai. Oh, man, that's that's really painful to see. Not only does he spit up the hot sauce and burrito and everything all over her, but then has to ask the girl for five dollars. Also, can we talk about homie in the top right? I'm pretty sure that's muscle man in a mask. There's no way. And you're probably wondering why I'm not leaning into Rigby as much for his disrespect to Eileen and also just treatment to Mordecai. Well, besides the fact that I was forced onto a date, I would feel a certain way, just the episode preceding this, if I wasn't pushed to my death after someone proclaimed that they wanted to kill me. So as you can see, I'm not really in a hurry to bash this raccoon. However, I will say, Eileen is the best thing to ever happen to Rigby post-school. And yes, I'm putting it over episodes like excellent. He just doesn't know it yet, and it's gonna take uh, like around five seasons to confirm so. Rigby's fifth solid would be for butter, and sixth solid would be for napkins, with this seventh solid being this. Hey, do me a solid take the heat for this. Take the heat for what? <gasps> uh. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. All right, quick question. If anyone has a law degree in like solids in the chat, in the comments, so what would happen if you were to counter a solid by saying that a certain solid means that you now owe them a solid? Like if Rigby wanted this, that Mordecai would say hypothetically, that would owe me a solid. Could they have like a solid war? These are the subjects they need to teach in school. Rigby drunk off power uses two solids to send Mordecai on a long run, apparently for the better ice cream sandwiches in which in the meantime, we really center in on Margaret wanting to leave. Both Mordecai and Eileen insist in separate scenes for her to stay, and that's super important. Eileen wanted this. Margaret never made any inclination in this episode to make it appear that this is nothing more than a, just a fun time with her friend and these two guys. They had one tiny interaction at the mini golf course, but that's literally it. Rigby said there were ice cream sandwiches at this party. Hook it up! Hey ladies, you want some of this? The greatest short scenes in this arc. Can we just agree that Muscle Man is like the best character in this Mordecai, Margaret, CJ arc so far? He's just so blissfully and unapologetically happy and excited for like just tiny things. Whether it was the concert or laughing with Rigby about Mordecai and Margaret, he's just been a bro and it's the best thing ever. With one solid left, Mordecai finally allocates brain space away from worshiping Margaret to finally bring Rigby aside and question his motives. It only took majority of this episode for him to realize that that this was a sabotage. Why are you using your solids to ruin my date with Margaret? Why do you use your solid to ruin my life? Ah, uh, quit being a baby. Ironically, it was Eileen's involvement in his world that ended up course correcting his life for the better. But again, it's just one of those neat things to see in retrospect. However, Mordecai is asked to do something that we don't get to hear. That's so bad that Mordecai denies the solid. It really shows you how they crank up the intensity here with showing the consequences of both taking solids too far for your own benefit and also the danger of rejecting a solid, which is kind of weird. So if you also on a solid and they ask for your social security number, you basically have to give it to them or the world would crumble? Note to self, get the algorithm to owe me a solid. However, in the meantime, the world is crumbling and Rigby is demanding Mordecai to do this solid. What's happening? Rigby! <laughs> she really thought. Benson, Skips, and Pops show up like it was nothing. At night. When the parks is seemingly closed. It's so random, like, I get it, Pops and Skips, they live there, but you would think Benson would be, oh, I don't know, in his apartment. But anywho, Skips reminds the Jokers that he warned them earlier, which he did, but then also used the solid, so you know. But more importantly, I wanted to show you this scene here. This is why I love this arc. Just do it already, Mordecai! But you'll never respect me again! Not if you're just doing a solid! That's what friends are for! They come through for each other when they need it most! Wow, I guess I never thought of it that way before. 
So basically... You're telling me throughout this entire adventure or even your entire life you never thought for at least one second of your desperate existence that a perk to this friendship is that they may do things for you that they may not necessarily see as ideal because they respect you and want the best for you? When the beginning of this episode literally had you lean on your friendship with Rigby and the entire solid system in order to get Rigby to do something that if he wasn't friends with you he wouldn't have done in a million years? What was that definition I said again? Having their opinions, thoughts, and behaviors and actions instantaneously align with yours, even if contradictory, in an attempt to develop a more fruitful relationship later? Margaret, the basic Starbucks coffee bird that she is, literally said, friends help each other. And Mordecai acts like it's like one of the math problems that can't be solved being solved on his face. This man's a sin. Margaret does solids for me all the time. Yeah, like tonight I broke a date so Eileen could go out with Rigby. Wait, you're only here because you're doing Eileen a solid? She was never interested in you in that way. Or if she was, she was waiting for you to make the first move, which you never did. You never did that. At all. And not only that, but even though Margaret's words are more basic than your Nick Jr. lineup, what he got out of that was that it was never a double date. Eileen never said it was a double date, but a group thing. She even worded it in the beginning as initially a date with Rigby. Where is this man's head at? Because whatever's going on up there, it's like his head is in the sand. And it only comes out coincidentally for the wrong reason. Anyway, this man does the dumb solid, which apparently is too raunchy for television, but everyone's face says it all. Throughout all of this, we get to our title. How did Mordecai and Rigby's friendship last? Well, luckily, it wasn't heavily reliant on Margaret's involvement, or else I couldn't have told you. Rigby has embarrassed this man in an unforgettable way, which doesn't even cover the pocket dial that he'd do later on, and it makes you wonder, did Mordecai reach his limit? You know what, Rigby? You're a jerk. I'm going to the arcade. I'll come with you. No way! I'm done hanging out with you. You're not my friend. I'm out of here. What if through realizing that he's got nothing without Mordecai, genuine empathy and guilt for someone who really likes a girl and was embarrassed because of it? Or the VCR being 4.20 p.m. or even because status quo? Rigby, in theory, should have too much pride to apologize in public. However, Rigby destroys the tape that has the embarrassing moment on it, and I wonder what it could have been. Anywho, you guys voted for a Muscle Man Detour, so we're gonna be doing that. The next episode in the arc will be Muscle 1 and then the next one after that we'll be right back on track when season three camping can be cool until then thank you so much for your time take care now foul.